Okay, let's start with diversification. It's kind of the bedrock, isn't it? Especially now, with markets feeling so fragmented. Predicting who's going to outperform seems, well, harder than ever. Absolutely. So diversification, spreading your investments across different places, different types of assets, it's a fundamental tool for managing that overall risk. We saw a bit of that coordination, didn't we? After the tariff news reversed a bit, markets bounced back together, kind of mirroring how they fell together earlier. We did. Although policy divergence between regions is still pretty high, that suggests we might see more regional dispersion, you know, markets moving differently in the medium term. So just buying a standard global index like the MSCI ACWI, that gives you diversification, right? Well, yes and no. It is global, but the way it's typically weighted by market cap. Ah, okay. So the biggest markets get the biggest share. Exactly. Which means it often ends up heavily tilted towards the U.S. Our sources show this pretty clearly. So what looks global might actually be sort of a concentrated bet on the U.S., mm -hmm. which could be risky given potential policy shifts or valuation worries there. Precisely. That's a key point for you listening. You need to look under the hood of these global funds to see the real regional weights. So what's the alternative then? One approach is what's called a risk-based allocation. Okay. How does that work? Instead of weighting by size, it tries to balance the risk coming from each region. So maybe you allocate less to a bigger, potentially riskier market and more to smaller, less risky ones to even things out. The theory is that by avoiding that over-concentration, especially in the U.S. perhaps, you might get better risk-adjusted returns over the long haul. It's about not having all your eggs in one basket, risk-wise. 